Hi, and welcome to this Apache Kafka series new course. This course is on Kafka Streams. I'm glad you joined me on this course and get ready. It's going to be lots of learning. So first, a course introduction. We're going to get started with Kafka Streams. We're going to see how to run the first application. We're going to see what is Kafka Streams, understand how it fits in the ecosystem, etc., etc. So with this brief introduction, I really hope you can get a takeaway from it and understand what we're going to do for the rest of the course. So first question is, what is Kafka Streams? Kafka Streams is an easy data processing and transformation library within Kafka. It ships with the Kafka binary. It's within Kafka projects, so it's not an external library uh, created by a third party. So here you have Kafka, and you can create Kafka Streams applications of any kind. It could be to transform data. It could be to enrich data, um, to perform, for example, fraud detection or monitoring and alerting. So there's lots of uh, basically applications. The idea is that Kafka Streams is a library that you set on top of Kafka and that you create your application on. So what is Kafka Streams really? It's a standard Java application. It's just a Java library and you just launch it like any Java application. And we'll see this during the course. You don't need to create a cluster um, for Kafka Streams application like you would for Spark or Flink or NiFi. And I'll have a lecture that goes over the difference. But the easy thing is that it's just a Java application, no clusters. It's highly scalable, it's elastic and fault tolerant because it inherits every specific benefit that Kafka provides because it's integrated with Kafka. And that makes it really, really awesome. It has exactly wants capabilities and there is a section in this course about what exactly wants means but this is the first library in the world that provides streaming exactly wants capabilities tightened with kafka and that's a huge thing in the streaming world it processes record one at a time so there's no batching so this is true streaming uh, some other libraries like spark streaming process things in batches and then it works for any application size. So even if you have a small project or a very, very large project, uh, you write the same code, you get the same application, and it scales the same way. So it's really awesome. So let's look at the architecture design, okay? So you've seen that slide if you looked at my Kafka Connect course, but let's get over this again. So you have a Kafka cluster, and it has several brokers, okay? In this case, four, but it can be from one to 100 or whatever you want. And you have your sources, and usually the way to onboard your sources in the perfect Kafka architecture design is that you have a connect cluster. And if you don't know what connect cluster is, I recommend you look at my connect course. Uh, you can find a, a link in the last lecture of this course. So you have your sources, and your connect cluster basically onboards it onto Kafka. And now your data is in Kafka, and you want to process it. That's where you have your streams application. So Kafka streams application basically sit on the right hand side, and they do from Kafka to Kafka. And that's really cool because all the data processing, all the data transformation is tightly integrated with Kafka. Finally, you wanna expose this transform data to your source, to your sinks, for example, a database, uh, Elasticsearch or whatever, then you had to ha again use uh, your Connect cluster for this. And this is all described in my Connect course. So in the Connect course, you saw the left-hand side. And in this course, we're really gonna see the right-hand side to do data transformation and processing using Kafka Streams. So a bit of history about Kafka Streams. Um, this API was introduced as part of Kafka 010, which was sometimes in 2016, and has been fully mature as part of Kafka 010, uh, 011, which is June 2017. So this is a really new library. Again, the API can change and I know will change, but what are you learning here is still very applicable in case of any changes. As I said before, it's the only library that can leverage the new exactly once capability from Kafka 011 and I have a whole section on this. And then it is a serious contender to other uh, streaming processing frameworks such as Spark, Flink, or NiFi, or any other streaming library. Um, so really, really good to get to learn it. And I'm glad you're uh, taking this journey with me. And then finally, as I said, it's a new library, so it's prone to, to changes. So don't be afraid if things change in the future. Uh, what you need to learn is the ideas behind it, the API, and all the changes will be somewhat minors in the future.